Uh, my name is Hal Shunder. Um, I worked at uh, RCA from starting on the 11th of November 1974, um, but I did have two uh, previous summers working uh, in college uh, for RCA in 1969 and 1970. Um, I uh, worked uh, for RCA until it became GE in 1986, and then in 1993, uh, GE, uh, or the portion of the defense business of GE became uh, Martin Marietta, or I'm sorry, Lockheed, uh, yeah, Martin Marietta first, and then two years later in 1995, it became uh, Lockheed Martin. So the standard uh, thing that we, we used to joke about at work was we could hold on to our jobs we just couldn't hold on to our company. Could you uh, just start with the first project that you worked on, and uh, were you nervous about it? How did you get help, and so forth? Um, the first project, uh, when I started in uh, late 1974, coming out of uh, MIT grad school in the Army, um, I wasn't too nervous because I had already worked, as I said before, with the same group that had hired me, uh, the Advanced Technology uh, section of uh, Morristown upstairs in building 108. So I already knew many of the people that I was working with. And uh, when the, did you work with them? Um, from, well, in 69 and 70 when I was a, a summer student and then beginning and they, they, apparently I did a good enough job that they wanted to hire me when I, when I finished with uh, the Army and with grad school. Um, the first project that I worked on was a, uh, a bandwidth reduction system where we, we would take a picture and do a two-dimensional Fourier transform on it using the fast Fourier technique that had been perfected uh, several years earlier up at Princeton University. Uh, and then using that, throwing away three quarters of the digital information, transmitting the remaining quarter, and then uh, at the far end, you would use an inverse fast Fourier transform and you reconst basically be able to reconstitute the picture. The idea here was to try to reduce the amount of, of information, the number of bits that were actually being transmitted, uh, because that was uh, the, the idea. Nowadays, of course, we have uh, th that those techniques are very well used in, in many video uh, games and, and, and other uh, uh, digital transmissions, but back in 1974, we were doing some pioneering work on that uh, uh, aspect. We, we did, we worked with both uh, a group in Camden, New Jersey, and in Morristown, where we built this uh, 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 big box there that uh, uh, did the, the FFT and the inverse, and the compression and decompression, uh, and that was uh, using a blazing technology of 10 megahertz. Of course, today's uh, computers there go probably about uh, 100 times faster, and, uh, and probably what took an entire uh, refrigerator-sized rack there could probably today be done on a, uh, on a, on a handheld computer. When you were working, was there a formal or informal mentor that you had? Um, well, I would, I would say probably the mentors that I had there were uh, some of the senior engineers uh, that, uh, that I worked with initially. I'm thinking specifically of uh, Dick Perry and Lloyd Martinson, uh, but also my, my immediate boss, Hank Halpern. Um, he was very helpful uh, in uh, guiding me there in, in, in what I was doing. And, you know, I mean, it was an interchange of ideas. I mean, I brought some new ideas from, from Princeton and from MIT, but they had, they had the wisdom of, of what actually worked in the field. And, and at the time when digital uh, technology was just beginning, uh, they, they uh, were able to, to pro provide some of the practical aspects of the theoretical things that I was, that I was first, better versed in. Did you feel that they valued your input? I think so. I mean, as as a collective team, we did a uh, we uh, the team got an award there for uh, the work that we did. So it was kind of nice to to be able to be recognized on the first thing that you were doing right out the block that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what are your uh, what are some of your fond memories of RCA? 
Well, um, I guess there's many different good memories that I have of RCA. I mean, I guess I really should start off with uh, volleyball. Uh, my dad mentioned that uh, he was a member of our volleyball team. We formed the first league uh, that's still going today here in 2015, uh, but started in 1975. Um, I was one team captain and there was this uh, vivacious young lady uh, who was captaining one of the other teams. and. Uh, you know, to make a, a long story short there, I ended up marrying her, and I'm still married to her. So I'm very grateful to RCA and uh, for, for that. Um, she, she worked at RCA for a number of years uh, until we had our kids. Uh, uh, the other, another thing that we, I really liked about RCA was the, the, the fact that they, you know, they had publications, the RCA family, which is a, which is a, a publication that, that went out every uh, uh, month or so, and it would it listed the people there who who would work for, were working for the company, the different aspects that that they that that they did, and it was a lot of human interest there. So people's anniversaries of of their working for RCA would be recognized there. Even the people who retired from RCA were mentioned there. Um, that's something, unfortunately, that that uh, the successor companies have abandoned. And uh, today, most of the uh, communications that come down with email and there are more more in the the aspects of exhortations there to 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 do better or to to uh, you know to make more profit for the corporation. And there's a lot less human interest uh, than than uh, what we had under RCA. Um, RCA also, uh, you know, I mean, it was not all all work. I mean, we did work hard um, and. Uh, but but we also had good times together. We, you know, going out to lunch with uh, fellow co-workers was a, always a highlight of, of uh, most days there. Um, you know, being able to go out to lunch with my wife was even better, I would have to say. But but uh, still, um, two things uh, that RCA had that, that, again, the successor corporations have, have sort of given up on. One was the, uh, an R the RCA store where you could buy... Uh, a lot of the memorabilia that's here in this uh, in this room in this museum here at Rowan University was probably bought at one or another of the RCA stores. Um, also, RCA had annual Christmas parties or parties for uh, the the employees and their dependents, you know, spouses and children, and that was always a big highlight there. Uh, my, I know my my two daughters really enjoyed going to. Uh, to the RCA Christmas parties there, where where they were treated like uh, like little little royalty that they were. Um, I should also mention uh, one thing that I think helped uh, in in RCA, which is still to some some extent there, and that's the uh, the Engineers Union (ASPEP), the Association for Scientific uh, and Professional Engineering Personnel, uh, which still represents the engineers at. Uh, uh, Morristown. Um, I, I was an, a councilman for ASPEP for about 30 years for five different council groups, including uh, uh, the time that I spent out at Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. Um, but I think that ASPEP was a very uh, uh, humanizing aspect for, uh, for RCA there. It, it, it sort of provided a counterweight for um, you know some of the top level people, uh, you know there, and 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 there are business. You know, as in any corporation has people who are interested more in business than they are in their people, and ASPEP tried to keep the people aspect of it. You know, not only you know the contracts, making sure that people were paid a fair and living wage, but also that they had a chance or an opportunity there to voice their ideas and their grievances. Uh, one of the things that our, our ASPEP initiated uh, was the um, after-hours course program where uh, uh, engineers and others could, could uh, get uh, additional information and, and, and to basically continue their learning because after all engineering is a profession there where um, I, I've read at one point there that you know every five to eight years, half of the stuff that you know is going to be obsolete. So education, continuing education in the engineering field is very important, and that's one thing where ASPEP really pushed there. I, over my uh, um, 
38 years with uh, RCA and the successor companies, um, ASPEP uh, uh, pushed this uh, uh, educational aspect of, uh, and, and also tuition refund for, pe uh, for people who were going to colleges, uh, ASPEP pushed that. But the courses that we took there um, were really very helpful. I ended up taking over 50 courses, including five different uh, courses in five different languages because of, we were uh, going to be uh, working with uh, people in foreign countries there. So I, I had uh, I ended up only using two of the languages, Italian and Japanese, but I also did learn a little bit of, uh, of Spanish uh, and uh, Chinese and Korean too. We've, uh, we've heard the term the RCA family mm -hmm. a lot from yeah. other people. What does that mean to you? Well, the RCA family was a, you know, in addition to, <laughs> that was the name of the publication that, that we had, uh, the monthly publication that I mentioned previously. But the RCA family was, you know, the, the, I think the idea that it was a really good place to work. And, uh, you know, as, as uh, um, uh, my dad can demonstrate there, he started and, and he convinced me that it was a good place to work. And so I also worked there. And, and, and one of my two brothers uh, works for uh, one of the successor companies, uh, Lockheed Martin, to this day. So it's a, it, you got the feeling that, that, that it was a family in the sense that, that the people cared about you and you were expected to care about other people too. Um, I believe that some of that has been lost there in the, in the uh, push there, some of the successor companies there seem to be more interested in, in developing profits and, and uh, you know, right-sizing the workforce. Um, you know, two, two specific aspects of that that I can, I can recall there. I remember under RCA, the, the profit margin, typically we were, ha the division the, the, uh, was happy when we made like a 6% profit. Uh, today, any, any division of Lockheed Martin making less than 10%, the people up at the top of that division are going to be under a lot of pressure there to improve their their bottom line. Um, so that's that's sort of a roundabout way of of, of the what I see about RCA uh, you know, the RCA family there. There was more. It was it seemed to be more family oriented. The idea that you would want to have your kids work for the same place that you did. Um, was was very strong there, and and there were many people who were there were multi generations uh, working at RCA. What do you see as the influence of RCA on South Jersey? How did RCA change South Jersey, in your opinion? Well, RCA, of course, uh, provided a lot of of upper middle class jobs and even some you know some of the senior people there probably had uh, you know the upper upper class jobs uh, here in South Jersey um, as my father mentioned there Morristown uh, was largely uh, because many of the RC employees lived in Morristown or, or or now in some of the other suburbs of of uh, of uh, uh, Camden and Philadelphia uh, they provided a, a good income. It was the, in, I believe it still is the second largest employer in all of Burlington County, RC, or Lo Lockheed Martin in Morristown, with over, over uh, 3,800 employees. So it provided a, a, a good income for people. Um, it was a, RCA was, I think, a good citizen there. They had uh, 403 acres, I believe, if I, if I remember, if the, if I remember the, the uh, uh, plan correctly, but uh, so it's almost two thirds of a square mile of, of Morristown was was under RCA our control. Um, they ended up donating a portion of that then to to develop the um, CSED site, the uh, Cornfield Cruiser, uh, which was originally a large uh, uh, radar ball there in the 1960s. Um, but they donated that to the Navy. Uh, they've given very generously there to the United Fund uh, and and other charities in uh, in uh, southern southern New Jersey. Um, so I I believe that overall the the influence has been very positive uh, for for uh, 
uh, southern New Jersey having having RCA there and and to some extent the the successor corporations as well it certainly has changed the landscape every time you drive up uh, I-295 there you see the cornfield cruiser and it's a reminder of of the uh, the influence of RCA uh, as an economic engine here in southern New Jersey in your eyes <clears throat> was there a downside to working for RCA or were there things that you didn't particularly like well, uh, downside, I mean, it, really there weren't too many downsides about working for, for RCA. Um, it perhaps limited people there in terms of whether they would look uh, to, to go outside of the region, okay? Because many, you know, many people who were, who were interested in advancing their careers go from job to job. So... If, if uh, you know from one corporation to another and there's a mixing then of of uh, of ideas and influence there um, so perhaps RCA because it was so family oriented at least compared to most other corporations you got less of the mixing or, or input from other other places or other ideas uh, than than possible there um, Downsides. I mean, um, you know, in my career, I believe I had 18 different managers. You know, some of them were very good. You know, Hank Halpern, uh, George Moss, um, uh, uh, Morris Ratliff, uh, uh, um, Eric Thompson are, are probably four, four of my best managers that I had. Um, a lot of them were, were sort of average. Um, unfortunately, of those 18, there were at least two or three that were really not not good uh, uh, either managers or leaders now as you know again as a as an army veteran I have an, some experience of it with leadership and I can I can tell you there that some of these uh, guys were not leaders and they were not even good managers um, what you do in this case and 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 the, because the corporation was large enough RCA was large enough even RCA Morristown was large enough you would you could find if you didn't like your manager you could look for another place within the corporation or within the facility to work. And I did that twice. So uh, even, even the bad aspects, you know, there was, there was always a hope there. And ASPEP helps you. You know, the, the engineers union did help there in, in that, res that regard. So overall, the experience was, was a very good one, I believe, working for RCA and even the su successor companies. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, mention in summing up? Um, well, the you know in, in terms of the training, one of the things that I really liked was the at, at RCA uh, had a thing called the uh, Chief Engineers Technical Excellence Committee, um, and they they had basically two two functions. One was uh, to make awards there for the employees, and, and because it was a chief engineers, it was not a it was it was an, a a committee there of engineers who were looking for the best engineering practices that that had been uh, uh, done in the previous quarter or the previous year uh, under RCA. So my for example, my father, um, uh, I don't, he didn't mention it, but he he won one of the the annual awards and I think, believe four of the quarterly awards for the work that he did uh, as a structural engineer. Um, so that was a very good aspect of the CTEC uh, committee. And the other uh, was also in the education. I, I had mentioned that there were after hours courses, but uh, the CTEC committee uh, held classes at lunchtime at uh, uh, RCA uh, and, and uh, usually on a weekly basis. And it so it was a nice chance for, for engineers there to present work that they had done uh, to let everybody in the, you know, other people or interested engineers there learn what had been done. And attending those uh, uh, CTEC uh, uh, talks was, was very, uh, very interesting. It, 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 it allowed a, a, a cross-pollination of ideas, of technical ideas. Um, uh, that's still there to some extent today, but it's it's just barely hanging on, and it's not being supported at at the uh, at the division level 
uh, within the successor companies anymore, and that's that's unfortunate. And what was the year you retired? Uh, I retired in 2012. Okay. Okay, so 25 years after my dad did. <laughs>